Okay, live in. Then, then, then a second. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do is that uh, you can put off your mic, turn off, just turn off your mic, and when you have the time, then when it's your turn, you just you just go on. So we are live now. All right. <clears throat> Second, great. <clears throat> okay, good afternoon, guys. Uh, how, how are you all doing? Hey, Obi. Hey, I'm great. And how are you too? It's been how a while. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm doing amazing, bro. I'm doing amazing. Thank great. you very much for joining us. Um, great. It's all a right. pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah, Jason. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good yourself, man. I'm doing great. I'm doing amazing. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we're going to roll in the conversation. Um, so Watch is going to join us. Um, yes, he's joining us now. But let's let's get straight into the conversation. Uh, thank you for everyone who is watching on Facebook right now. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us, have this very critical and overdue conversation about the Tamale film industry. Um, I have been privileged to be in Tamale, and I have been privileged to watch OBL's production. Kelly, that's the, did, did, did I get a name right? Bobby. Yes, it's Pierre. That's correct. Pierre. Pierre. Yes, great. Yeah. So um, I know some of the stuff, and I've and I've got to see some of the series that that that, that have been shot there. I think some years back, three years or four years ago. Tamale was, I think Kumau tried, you know, incorporating or bringing the Tamale industry and into the award schemes and stuff. And even down here in Accra, some, some things have been, you know, they tried doing some few stuff. However, have we had the conversation on, on a large scale to really look at the Tamale industry? Because when you go to Nigeria, they have the Kanewood. Now, the Kanewood is the Nigeria part of the uh, the, the northern part of Nollywood. And they are doing extremely amazing. Actually, when you go on Netflix, Carnival films are more on Netflix than the movies that have been produced in, uh, in Lagos and all of the other parts of Nigeria. That means that when attention is being given to the northern part of our, of our industry, there is a great potential. And so I'm very glad that we are having this conversation today. And I thank you guys for coming here. Um, quickly, I want you to just introduce yourselves, what you do in the industry, in Tamale, and you know, what your experience have been so far. So that we quickly just um, dive into the next conversation. I, I will start with you, Bobby. Uh, thanks very much for having me on your platform. Um, it's always a pleasure to talk about the Northern Film industry. Um, I'll first of all like to say a very good um, evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you're watching from. Um, my name is Leonard Atawoge Kubale, but um, a lot of people know me in the industry as OBL. I'm the founder and CEO of OBL Studios in Tamale. Um, my primary um, business at the studio there is that we we produce films and um, I consider myself as a film entrepreneur. Um, it's a new way that is coming up, but um, that is the key thing. Um, the Northern Film Industry has been um, in existence for some time now. I recently joined it, so I'm not that old. I'm currently like 11 to 12 years into it. But um, I got into the industry with a lot of passion and determination to giving my best within the shortest possible time. And then um, my experience is that it has been a very wonderful um, and challenging field to be. Um, you need a lot of passion. You need, of, you need a lot of self-determination uh, because um, the key thing that will keep you moving is, is the fact that you enjoy what you do. So my experience with the Northern Film Industry is that um, I, I think there is hope for it. Um, 
just like there is hope for the Ghana film industry. And a lot of things are happening. So it's, it's, it's a great opportunity that we'll get a chance to talk about all this um, probably later in time. So that is, that is who I am and, and what I do. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Obi. Thank you very much. Um, so, Sawash, are you, are you with me? Hello, Zawash. I think the line, I think he is in the, he's in the, he said he was at the airport now and he was having some challenges. Um, but however, we'll just dive into the conversation. When they join us, we would introduce them appropriately. So, Hello, guys. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, so watch. Can you hear me? Please unmute your mic. Unmute your mic. Okay, I'm just yeah. unmute. Yeah, hello, so watch. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, I, I, I personally seem to be having some network challenges. Yes, uh, from where I am at the Tamale airport. But then uh, I heard you say uh, we should introduce myself. Yes, uh, my name is Al Hassan, I'm a film and television academy, uh, a film school here in Tamale, which was established uh, in 2016. Uh, apart from that, uh, I'm a motion graphic designer. Uh, a video editor and a cinematographer. I'll also do scripts, but then alongside that, I am a correspondent, a, a UTV Northern Regional Correspondent. So I'm juggling uh, with several jobs. Uh, in the Northern Region. Okay, great, thank you. So let's just, let's just dive in into, into the line of questions and begin to take a, a critical look at, you know, the Tamale film industry and what the impacts have been and what, what really has been happening up north. Now, um, Obi, if you can just come in, um, I want us to just, for you to just give us a brief history of the Northern film industry um, and where you guys started from and where you guys are today. Okay. Um, well, I, it's unfortunate uh, Wash is at a place where his network is not very good. Um, Wash, Wash has been in the industry for some time now, and before I stepped in, you have been the most appropriate person to talk about the industry um, in terms of where it started from. However, um, whatever I will say is going to be based on what I heard from other people and might not be able to share my personal experience. By then, I wasn't fully into the film industry. I know um, from what the founding fathers have said, um, okay, the, the information, um, the, the nice thing about the non-film industry is that um, unlike um, the film industry in probably in Kumasi and in Accra, our own is a bit well established in the sense that it started with what we call drama groups. Um, drama groups were the main ways that people were using to entertain people in the north and then communicate information across. So it initially started with drama groups where they came together to um, stage dramas to educate farmers. The ultimate aim was farmers. Um, so the agriculture sector had engaged a lot of people to do drama, to educate farmers on good farming practices. And that was where the interest came. So after they got um, into, into that sort of drama, then they thought that they could also do that to entertain people. And then um, one of our founding fathers, uh, may his soul rest in peace, I think um, he's called Mbagomda. They were the key pioneers. They actually came together and then started this whole drama groups together. And that was 
probably around the uh, 1980s there. I'm not very sure of the year, but there should be around 1986 they're going. So um, they started getting on film in the early 1990s. Uh, and then we started seeing um, mm. the band from in the, I mean, um, the, the band movies on GTV somewhere in the 1991, 92. I'm not very sure of the year, but um, if, if I'm wrong, someone should correct me in the comment below. But then that is how it actually started. So um, it started very small. These were just small group of people who just wanted to entertain people and they drive the pleasure from that. And then gradually these drama groups actually came to, to be established. It was something that was clearly established in the North and then their numbers started increasing. So when the numbers, numbers started increasing, it came to a point that they said, well, it was time to probably come together and form an association. So they came together a number of times, it didn't work out. And then finally, um, they came together and then established what we now know as the Northern Drama and Filmmakers Association. That is that association that has existed till now. Um, so when you come to the North, uh, and you talk about film, everybody talks about the Northern Drama and Filmmakers Association. Now, this group is considered the mother group in the Northern film industry where almost all filmmakers are kind of affiliated to. So um, the structure of the film industry in the North, it's a bit well organized because I know down South, we don't have something like a full mother group where all actors belong to. They might have the Actors Guild, film producers, but then we have we have a mother group where all of us can come together. So when Nodra Film, um, sh I mean the Northern Drama and Filmmakers Association is um, abbreviated as Nodra Film. So when Nodra Film calls for all filmmakers, we have producers, distributors, we have actors and actresses all coming together under one umbrella. That is the level of um, uh, structure. That's the level of unity that we have in the north. That could have played to an advantage to us because if you can bring all the film key players under one umbrella, then you are capable of communicating appropriately. But for me, this is one area that we've not made very good use of, even though we can still all come together, but we're not making use of that unity to communicate and try to improve the industry. So um, from Nodra Film, then so many um, drama groups came up and then production houses came. And then with the onset of production houses, uh, members in these production houses, one way or the other, always belong to an, a drama group that is also affiliated to Nodra Film. So irrespective of how you look at it, Nodra Film still remains the mother group for the film industry. Um, recently, um, um, Sewash also came out with um, a film school that has its own caliber of people, well-educated people in the film industry. A product of it is also on our talk here. I think that's, um, is that? Um, Arafat. Arafat. Arafat, exactly. Arafat is a product of that and um, it's been inspirational. So uh, this, this is the little that I can say about the film industry. Um, I'm sure if Wash says something, I might remember some few things and then add up. But this is the short history that I can give about the film industry in the northern region here. Amazing. Um, amazing. Thank you, Obi. Um, Arafat, can you hear me? Arafat, say Wash. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So just, just add up on to what uh, Obi said about the history of the film industry. Uh, if you have a good network, if you can just, you know, yes. Up. Yes, I, I, I don't know why I am currently, I am afraid that if I'm, I move, the network uh, might go up. But I don't know whether you can <laughs> hear me before I proceed. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear? I can hear you. Yes. Good. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, one of the uh, initial uh, tasks that I undertook uh, when I came back uh, to Tamale, that was like uh, in 2014, was to do a documentary on the northern uh, movie industry. 
uh, I was so hard to dig under to try to find out northern region. And just like uh, OBL said, yes, uh, it started by way of uh, social drama, where uh, uh, entities like NGOs and CSO uh, get in touch with uh, people to act up or maybe uh, put up certain uh, uh, in, uh, innovations into a uh, drama way because they realize that if they are to approach the people and just speak to them on how to live their life or how to be able to adopt to certain social changes, it might be difficult. So they decided to use it through drama. So by doing that, they, they are kind of got uh, people like the founders of uh, the Northern movie industry to go out and act out to the various communities uh, to be able to sensitize them on certain uh, social uh, interventions. So that's uh, uh, where it started. And then, I mean, one person that I can recollect uh, very well is uh, BBC, uh, now Mr. Rashi, is with the uh, GBC in Northern Region. He's one of the uh, uh, key persons who came up with the innovation to set up uh, several drama groups in, uh, in the Northern region. And as I speak, we have several, I think we have about uh, 30 to uh, 35 different drama groups in the Northern region. And each group can consist to about uh, 50 members uh, in the group. I mean, initially when they started, every group was uh, kind of uh, ensuring that they do movies based on their members. But uh, three, I think uh, three years ago, uh, what they did was to kind of uh, tap into each other's uh, strength. So if this group has a popular face that they think the people uh, uh, will want to see, they tap into that person and then use them uh, in their movie. So thereby, for now, what they do is that they ensure that it cuts across. So whether you belong to A drama group or B drama group, depending on, on the script that the producer or the director is bringing up, they usually tap into the other groups to ensure that at least the movie come out to the, for, so that the audience can fully enjoy it. Yes, uh, you realize uh, one of the movie industry is uh, the, uh, what's the name? I'll, I'll call it the, the comradeship, the virtue of comradeship. What they do is that because I have a group and let's say OBL has a group and he invites me, what I do is that I don't charge OBL with the intention that when I also need him to come onto my set, uh, he also do that wing, willingly and without any uh, financial attachment. I mean, those are one of the areas that I think is uh, 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 kind of uh, militating against the progress of the Northern movie industry, because you realize that uh, it's about time. You invest time and resources in ensuring that you come up with a movie. It is also very important that in as much as you have a budget, you should also have a budget for the cast and crew who, are, who you are supposed to use uh, in your movie. So I think as time goes on, we'll be able to enumerate some of the challenges and probably maybe proper solutions that uh, we can actually bring uh, to bear on the Nordic movie industry so that it can, it can, it can grow. Amazing, can I, amazing, amazing, amazing. Can I add something small? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, oh, yes, so yes, speaking, yes. Of, speaking about um, the history, how it actually started, certainly we cannot talk about the film industry in the Northern region without really talking about where exactly they used to watch um, the, the early movies. Um, before the drama groups, there were two vibrant existing cinema houses in the North, one was called Rivoli, and then the other one was Victory. Um, almost all the film lovers who, have, who are now aged and um, the key, the key um, elders in the film industry in the North, almost all the big guys, one way or the other, um, they, they kind of had the motivation to get into the film industry by going, through, by going to watch movies in these cinemas, Rivoli and um, Victory. Um, unfortunately, um, or, or the, trend, the trend there was that it, they, they, they actually started with a lot of Indian movies initially. So um, they used to show almost every weekend and then people used to travel all the way from the nearby villages and then come to Tamale to watch. 
then um, these Indian movies gave way for the Chuck Norris and then the Chinese films that also came in. And that was lovely. And people were still attending. Then the, the Bani film industry came on screen and then they started showing some of the movies in Rivoli and then um, Victory. It was quite exciting. By then, people, just very few people really had TVs, um, black and white TVs were there and then people were watching. So um, the, two, the two cinemas that I've spoken of, Rivoli and Victory, um, unfortunately, they were all owned by foreigners. And that is one second thing about our nation here. They were all owned by foreigners. And then um, after a while, they kind of just sold the space out and then left. And then um, there was no continuation. Really no one invested into it. It just kind of stopped suddenly. And as I speak to you now, um, most of the spaces there have been converted to different things. For example, the Rivoli Cinema is now um, known as Melcom, Ghana, and the Victory has been converted to an office and a school. So that is that is how quick we threw away our cinemas and then um, just went down that way. So um, that is just what I wanted to add to that. Yes, uh, yeah. just to add up Thank to, you. Uh, the cinema angle of things uh, in the northern region. Uh, uh, you do realize this particular phenomenon it cuts across uh, the country, even from Accra and Kumasi. There are no longer cinema centers. Uh, that's where people can actually go and watch uh, movies. But as I indicated earlier, my main focus in coming back uh, to the northern region was to ensure that we reestablish the movie making business. And then what I did initially was to come up with a documentary uh, the, known as the Northern Movie Industry. I think uh, if you go to Google, you'll be able to search for it. And then at least try to appreciate uh, the genesis or the beginning of the uh, Northern Movie Industry. But just like uh, OBL indicated, I, I mean, the killing of the cinema centers is actually what uh, kind of uh, affected the movie making industry. And then even the proliferation of uh, TV sets and TV stations and radio stations uh, has also a factor. But even then, uh, we can be able to do what? Find our way through uh, re-establishing the fun or maybe the enthusiasm that uh, the audience usually have when it comes to uh, movie making. So here, I mean, I think two years ago, uh, the filmmakers here in Tamale uh, reintroduced the screening of uh, movies uh, in, in, in various centers. Uh, uh, various entertainment centers across, uh, uh, across town. Instead of them to kind of ensure that entertainment, because uh, to me, I wouldn't understand why if you are doing a, a, a screening, you should invite musicians to come and sing. I mean, what they do is that they all come up on stage one by one and perform. And that uh, by the end of the day, because basically you have two to three hours for you to premiere your movie. But you see all these entertainers who, when they get excited, might not want them to stop. And when they finish and you want to kind of preview, uh, premiere, or pre, uh, premiere your movie, uh, you kind of see that uh, it is no longer interesting to them. So most of the uh, premiering that I have been, I realized that uh, it doesn't even end. They just do the premiere for like 30 minutes and then they will ask the audience to go and buy the CDs or the DVDs, which I think uh, is not in, in, it's not right. Because if someone is paying like 10 CDs to come into a movie premiere and then the movie doesn't end and then you ask them to buy the CDs, I mean, it's obviously that it is wise for them to just wait for the movie to get launched so that they can even just use five CDs and go and buy the CD or the DVD and own it eternally. So I think that area is, 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 is one of the spots that I think uh, the movie makers or the filmmakers uh, in the Northern region uh, should look at. And just uh, as uh, uh, you indicated with OBL, OBL has come out with a, a kind, some kind of a panache in the Northern movie industry. I mean, gone were the days that you actually see movies 
that uh, the main language, obviously the main language here in the northern region is the granny. Yeah. Uh, but uh, until recently, they started uh, inputting or kind of adding subtitles to appeal to uh, movie lovers across uh, different tribes. So I think for that one, uh, it's a plus. And uh, uh, since uh, OBL came into the system, it has actually changed the way uh, filmmakers and movie makers uh, uh, come up with their movies because now they actually take time in ensuring that they come up with very good scripts. So even if it is not even a script and they, they kind of have it in a prose form, it is easier for them to be able to do what? Shoot the various scenes and come up with the storyline, which will do what? Will be very, very uh, entertaining and educative mm. for uh, the audience who are watching. Amazing, 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 amazing. Uh, quite intriguing stuff that you guys, you know, opened my eyes to a lot of things. And I, I, you know, I like that for the fact that the northern uh, the northern industry has a form of a structure, and you guys seem to be so connected, you know, in some way and in some form. And that is one thing to really, really, really emulate. Um, Arafat, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can, Chrissy. Great, great. How are you doing? I'm good, yourself, man. I'm doing amazing. Can you just quickly introduce yourself so that we just hook you into the conversation? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Um, my name is Arafat Abbas. Uh, I'm an actor as well as a concept developer and a script writer based in the northern Ghana. Okay, amazing, great. So um, I think you are you are one of the you know the young generation uh, actors coming up. How is the how how is the northern film industry for you guys? You know the the upcoming actors. How is it for you guys there? <laughs> well, it, it's 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 been very much challenging in so many ways, but then we are trying our best. You know, uh, this is, filmmaking is something that is uh, being gradually accepted by uh, people in the North. So adapting to cultural beliefs as well as religious beliefs too has been a prime factor that has been, in, that has been giving us the young generation some uh, restrictions in terms of developing our crafts as uh, uh, young actors as well. Okay. And, and also, Great. And also um, adding up. Yeah. And yeah, also yeah, adding yeah, up yeah, to sure. it. Is that, is, yeah, and also adding up to it is the fact that there's been, uh, there's not been um, uh, consistency in film productions down here. So that has actually given some limitations to the exposure that some, uh, that has actually given limitations to chances that uh, young filmmakers have down here. Okay, all right. Sure, very true. Now, uh, Obi, I want us to look into this. You, you, you took me through, so right now, you took me through the structure, yourself and Sir Wash took me through the structure of how the film industry in the Northern region is. Um, basically from the, not, uh, the Northern Drama and Film Association, you know, all connecting the various drama troops together and now you guys are now intercrossing and and you know doing films together. Um, you, Obi, you went on to speak about to speak about the distribution. Um, so I watched, so you know, took me through a little bit of it. But how do you guys generally distribute the content you create? Because I hardly find any of your content here in Accra or in Kumase, how do you guys distribute content up north? Yes, um, that's a very good question. Um, distribution up north here is 
it's done in such a way that, um, for example, if you come out with a movie, <clears throat> obviously it's the responsibility of the producer to go ahead and then replicate the CDs. And then um, you have people who um, call themselves distributors. Um, most of them are actually actors and the same time producers. So they have like two or three rules. But um, when it comes to the distribution, they have small shops dotted all over town. And then um, that is one type of distributors. They have the stores. Then another type of distributors, they take the Bobby. CDs. Yes. Bobby, are, yes. You, are you telling me that yeah. CD distribution is still working in some money? Yes. You, you, yes. No, because I thought because I thought the film, I thought the CD distribution was dead. Yeah, the CD distribution is probably dead in Accra and dead in Kumasi. And it's all because of what the key in the key players down south did to the CDs. Okay. Um, the, 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 there are two main reasons why I personally think, it's my personal opinion. It's, it's not really backed by research, but it's my personal opinion. I think there are two main things. The reason why um, um, CD, DVD or CD distribution is dead in, in, in Accra. One, um, there were too many TV stations that were playing a lot of movies and hence no one was interested in watching the chaff we're producing. And the second reason is the chaff itself we're producing. People were tired of the so-called glamour, they were tired of the repeated characters on screen. The stories were one way, they kept complaining and the filmmakers were not listening. And they lost interest and then strongly got hold onto foreign content. And then guess what? There were di satellite dishes all over and that made watching movies outside really, really easy. And they didn't see the reason why they should spend more Money. After all, once in a while, one of the one or two TV stations down south will play a Ghanaian movie for them to watch, and and filmmakers down south were so eagerly giving out their movies to the TV stations for almost nothing of a price, ranging from two thousand to five thousand there to be played, and then it kind of killed it. Yeah, you were getting the two thousand five thousand, but don't forget that the five people who are going to sit in the same room and watch from the same television set will have probably come to buy separate DVDs or probably if you, there was a premiere, they would have paid individually to get into the hall to watch. But you've given out to a TV station and then the same 10 people are just sitting there watching it for the same price. So no matter the number of people who are going to watch it, the TV stations have already paid you. We killed it. The industry guys over there killed it. Unfortunately, in the North here is not still dead, but suddenly um, most of our guys were almost taking the same trend like what was happening down south. Luckily, Nodra Film and FIPA came together and quickly noticed that this was the same trend that the southerners filmmakers, the southern filmmakers did and then killed their industry. So we, we kind of stopped it a bit. We stopped it, but some people are still doing it, but it's not as big. So CDs and DVDs are still selling up north here is still selling, yes. So we have people who have um, DVDs shops dotted all over in town. And then these people, they sit there to sell. But then we have another group of distributors who take these CDs and go to the villages all over where people, um, um, the villages over there also buy, they also buy. So we have that kind of mobile distributors and then stationary distributors. So when you produce a movie, then those who can afford come in to buy the number of CDs from you, and then they go to sell. Some, some buy and pay cash, some also take it, and then after they sell, you go in for the money. And then those who also go around to distribute, they come to take the CDs, go around the villages, and then distribute. And then, I mean, sorry, and then they sell, and then they bring you the returns. So this is how CD distributions is currently going in the north. And that's how we actually distribute our content for the local guys to watch. That is how the local people get our movies to watch. I think your mic is off. Yes. Okay. 
Yes. The the the, the city distribution. Yeah. I don't know, because I'm I'm quite surprised. Okay. Because yeah. for me, okay, first hand, I know that the city distribution is is you know far gone and you know, even even Kumase who, who was distributing it in mass number and stuff like that, even you know, sunk. Yeah. Um, with what you rightly said, with the satellite TV taking CDs, uh, films to television um, and stuff like that. Yes, all of those things are factors, and I think in in, in this proper you know policy to address all those things. And like for example, the associations have not took the right move to you know curb what was really really happening up there. However, I want to ask. How profitable is the city distribution up north? Because I know that Kumasi made uh, millions and billions of cities distributing cities in Kumasi and neighboring cities. How how lucrative is the distribution channel there up north? Um, well, the, the fact the fact is is clear. There is a gradual decline in the number of cities that you can sell nowadays because there's a gradual increase in the number of satellite dish people are also buying. Um, there is, um, initially you could sell, you could sell up to 20,000 copies, but of late, um, the range is between um, 10,000 maximum to, um, between 5,000 to 10,000 maximum, okay? So yes, there is a decline. There's a decline in the sales of CDs. But, the culture is not dead, and um, we we are making we are putting all efforts to protect the sales of the CDs. We don't want it to die off. Um, unfortunately, technology is not favoring us in this battle. Um, most people don't get DVD decks to even buy. If you even want a DVD deck to buy, it's, it's kind of difficult unless a home theater. Unlike initially, you know, when DVD decks came, they were very uh, um, cheap and affordable. Um, courtesy of our loose borders, most of the Nigerians came with a lot of um, um, DVD players at very affordable DVD prices. Players. Yes, and then um, rural electrification, um, thanks to the government. Um, I don't like associating which particular government, but at least thanks to government that rural electrification brought about increase in the sales of the CDs because most um, people in the rural areas initially didn't have light, so now they had light. Um, their first point of entertainment was now to buy um, these DVDs and then DVD they are able to buy very good DVD decks and then buy our CDs. So yes, um, there's a gradual decline in the sales of the DVDs. So you obviously not be able to say that we are making much mo money now than previous. In previous, we were making more money than now, but we are trying to see how we can pr protect the culture. We don't want it to die off. Amazing. I, I, I'm tempted. <laughs> I'm tempted to stay here and, and dive into this whole thing. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to try and, and, and move on. I'm going to come back to that same topic distribution. However, okay. um, let me let me just I think you guys have already highlighted some key challenges in the film industry up north. And um, you, I think Sir Watch spoke about the fact of this. Uh, what, what, what was the name he, he, he gave it? He mentioned some name, I've forgotten. Is it not Rafa? Brotherhood or something. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. No, he talked talk about some loyalty where, you know, butter exchange of scales and stuff like that. Yes, that sort of you know? comradeship, yes. Yeah, comradeship, great, comradeship. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's preventing producers from, you know, putting in a, a lot of funding into productions up north. What, if you want to highlight on that, and then what else do you think is the key, some, some of the key challenges that, you know, the industry up north is facing? Fred, is it directed to me? Yes, yes, to you, to you. Oh, okay. Um... Like, like um, what said, um, I, I need to reemphasize this particular one because it's one of the major challenge. Um, 
the fact that we we you know that sort of comradeship is dead. So um, labor, the use of actors and actresses is almost um, without pay. Um, you just kind of compensate them, um, unlike how much you pay down south. Um, it it raises your budget so high. Um, fin finance finance obviously is one of the key problems here. However, um, like we said, the the distribution is a major factor here because when you produce your movies and you don't get a good returns for it, then it becomes a bigger problem for you to continue. You will not be able to get returns. You will not be able to get adequate funds to invest in the next movie. So that is another major factor. Um, one key problem we also have here is um, in terms of the know-how. We we do not have uh, very good or high levels of know-how in terms of the craft itself. There's lack of workshops. There is nothing going on. Um, I think it is in the wake of that that Sewash has established this film school that um, he's trying to train people about how to shoot because um, that, that plays a very important role in addressing these issues of our clients and audience complaining about the poor quality in our movies. It's all about the technical know-how. For me, these are the two major challenges. We need, um, in the North here, we are gradually facing issues with distribution and returns, um, no investment, no support from the government. But then at the same time, we are also having a deficit in the know-how. And the, the need for um, um, workshops, the need for film schools, the need for some sort of education to bring our key players um, to a point where we can provide and serve the clients with quality products. Okay, Obi, great. Um, Sawash, can you hear me? Sawash. <laughs> All of us, I, can you yes. hear me? Yes, I can. Right. And so, I, 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 I would like to apologize for not. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you both now. Yeah, I've had to come to this discussion, and I would like to. Uh, Sincerely apologize for that. Uh, I have no idea how I keep losing uh, internet connection here. Sure. All right, can you just go on and tell us about some of the challenges, some key challenges that, you know, young actors coming up in the North. What are some of the challenges? What are some of the key challenges you guys face in the industry? Okay, so um, for us young filmmakers, there's the need for us to learn more in order to develop uh, the, our crafts. But then one of the issues, key issues that has been our problem is that we, we, we literally have no idea what we are doing. It's, it's, it's something that we are just doing out of passion, right? But we don't find the time to actually delve into developing their craft, learning and, and developing more skills in the craft, right? So down, down south, Accra, Komasi, Sunyani, there are a lot of schools over there where young people go to learn and develop a craft. But then down here, I only think of uh, Tamale from Elevation Academy, uh, which Sewash uh, decided to bring out as an e initiative in training young palette filmmakers. And yes, uh, thankfully, a lot of us, uh, some of us have actually recognized that and then we are trying our best to work more on our craft. One of, another, th another issue is the thing of paint. Hello, Percy. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can, can you hear, hear me, Percy? Yes. Yeah, so the, another you. issue that yeah, has to, that is a big challenge for us as young filmmakers is the issue of payment, right? So uh, a, a, lot, a lot of young people don't actually wow. do their best wow. in 
in the filmmaking industry down here because it's a big issue when it comes to filmmaking. At the end of the day, you go to a set, and at the end of the day, watch it is oh, Charlie, you we will talk when when we talk. That that's that the term that is used down here, and that. Payment issue is something that actually motivates a lot of people. We are we should actually work to get paid, not just to get fame. And that is actually another thing that is affecting young creative art developers down here. All right, all of us, thank you. So watch. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you can you go on with and tell us some of the challenges that you know you, you think? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, just like uh, Arafat said, uh, you realize that uh, majority of the youth here in the northern region have the passion to pursue uh, such a career, but then going beyond that, uh, uh, they have no idea what they are is is the need to have something to sustain you. And that's ensuring that it is a career which, I, I mean, gives you Social incentives see that they win, they want to be selected. That is a driving force, uh, and, and mm -hmm. that's why you realize that uh, with Tamil Film and Television Academy, we've been in existence for about six years now. Hello, Zawash. Zawash. Oh, okay. Zawash's internet is, is quite bad. Uh, Obi, save the day for me. So, okay. So, um, I think Zawash was making some cool points there. Yeah. However, let's let's move on to um, the way forward. When when I talk about this things. I like to very much look at a progressive aspect of the whole uh, conversation and see how best we can move the film industry forward. Now, okay. like I started in my opening, the northern part of Nigeria, the Kanawood, is doing so amazing. And, yeah. you know, they are, even, they are even almost bigger than Nollywood itself in in Lagos, mm. and they are always, you know, they are always collaborating with Nollywood itself and you know, doing amazing stuff and pushing out there. A lot of stuff happening there. The point is, is the northern industry being well recognized, okay, by the entire Ghana film industry? Are we giving your due? Are you underrated? Are we overlooking the 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 potential you guys have there. Um, well, if if I'm going to talk about this issue, then I don't have to hold back words. I need to be as blunt as possible, and then at the end, if I need to apologize to anyone it affects, then that's fine. Um, so when we talk about national recognition, um, I. I thought, I thought that um, one way or the other, we're going to see this until in December, we had a very big news flash that came to us that the president, Nana Ado, Adan Kofu Ado yesterday inaugurated a national film authority. And that was the way it came. And we're so happy, so happy. 
And that was kind of reported like on the 20th December. I'm not very sure of the date. Um, I went there quickly to see whether there was a Northern representation in the National Film Authority Board. And I was kind of surprised. I was really surprised that at the national level, um, I just want to assume that um, they didn't feed them information appropriately, or this that there was no adequate information that there's a vibrant and an existing film industry in the North and hence needed a stronger and a fair representation on that board. Now, um, that is the first point. The second issue has got to do with the fact that um, it, as if it wasn't enough just to hear again that Yes, um, a, a committee was set up to um, look into the issue of classification, okay? Classification, and then above it, there was this other issue that also came up where they were talking about censorship. And I'm yeah, surprised local, that- local, local committee, the local content committee. Yes, I'm surprised that I mean, it almost sounds like the concept of decentralization doesn't seem to hold. What do you expect us to do? That with the little income that we are gaining or making, when we produce films, we should travel all the way to um, Accra to, to get it rated and censored? Why, why everything centered there? Why everything centered there? So in the first place, there is a failure at the national level to even recognize the existence of the film industry in the north. We have made we have made it clear enough that there is a film industry in the north. And for me, I think any literate person, any well-educated person who really wants to revamp the film industry must first conduct a research. This research should not be limited to down south alone. It should be nationwide to understand how spread the film industry is. In doing so, the person would have recognized the existence of the local film industry up north here. So it is not in our role to make noise and call for them and call for attention. It is in their role, it is a national thing. When is it national? It means that we're all involved. Whatever funds were used to do the initial research to establish this, whatever, we all supported it. When they were calling in for us to support for the establishment and the passing of this, we all supported it. FIPAC has a branch here. Didn't they consult that? Didn't they consult FIPAC to find out where their members are? So for me, I think there's already a failure at the national level to even recognize the fact that we exist here. However, we have done our best. We have done so much well in terms of controlling our content being played on national TV in order not to kill the taste for it. We have done so much well, and that's the reason why DVDs are still selling in the North here. We, we understand what the whole issue is and we are trying to control it, okay? Now, I, I got so excited when I heard that David Donto was actually the board chairman for the NFA. I was so happy about that. Why? Because I know this, this man, this honorable man, is someone I loved so much because he was one of the best hosts for a nationwide program on television called Agro. That time, most of us didn't understand Chi. My grandma, who had lost the ability to learn any language, at least could learn Chi, one, two, three, Baku Mienu, from um, Honorable David Donto. So when I heard he was a board chairman, I was expecting in the first place that knowing the caliber of people who are in the industry, excuse my words to say that is not almost like you can say 80% of those in the film industry are not well educated. Hence, they don't stand the opportunity to go to websites or Facebook and read what NFA actually stands for. I was expecting him to have made a video to explain what NFA actually stands for. So that everybody will appreciate the establishment and therefore even appreciate what the government has done in the first place. They didn't publicize it enough. It stayed among all those who get on Facebook and probably check on once in a while news, but there should have been some serious sensitization. There should have been a nationwide 
publicity of the establishment of that national film authority, that could strongly sink down and let people understand that the government at least is putting in more effort to bring the film industry back to ball. Right now, a lot of things have happened. They collected data. They collected data in January. There was a data collection that they did. And I was so amazed that in among the questions, among the variables they were looking out for, they didn't even ask for the level of education. What is the qualification? To even know the caliber of people you have in terms of education so that you know whether when you're designing workshops, these workshops should be in English or should be in the local language. We can educate ourselves. So when you talk about recognition, for me, I'm already personally, I, I think that is less than at the national level to even recognize and understand the nature of the film industry. In Ghana, research is required. Research is strongly required to understand the nature of our distribution, to understand the caliber of people we have who are the key players in the industry. And hence, when you're designing workshops, you know the medium and the language you use, you know the sort of uh, um, equipment or teaching learning materials you bring. You should understand the market. You should understand the dynamics. This is very key. So already for me, I think there is a national failure to recognize us. We have done our best and we'll keep doing our best. Okay, we'll keep doing our best. So, so the, the, um, <laughs> The other thing that I wanted to say in terms of recognition is the fact that, yes, um, most of our movies too can be found in Kumasi and in Accra. In Accra, if you want to find most of the Dagbadi movies, they've kind of located it in Agbogoloshi and Tema, those places where you have more northern stay in there. They have the DVD shops that are still there. They are selling. They are still selling over there. The DVD, DVD uh, um, CDs are selling over there. So um, I, I just think that um, for me, I feel the failure in the recognition is just coming from the fact that at the national level and the key players they have kept there, they are really failing us. They are not putting up um, much effort. Mm. And, uh, and as I said at the initial uh, stage, I'm going to blunt on that, but I've actually we held so many things. Maybe at an appropriate time, if you want, you can let us talk about the NFA and what they are doing. I have a lot of things to say but I'm not just that type of condemns, at least I condemn and then I suggest. And that is what is more important. Yes. Yes, it's, uh, Thank just you, to Obi. add up to- uh, I'm still stunned. Watch. Yes, uh, just to add up to uh, what Obi has said. Yes, it's a fact that uh, the uh, Northern movie uh, industry uh, has been underestimated and it seems to be uh, one of the uh, things that is lacking on our national policy, because when you look at uh, national conventions and other uh, things that is supposed to help uh, raise up uh, the movie industry across the country, the uh, northern movie industry is visibly uh, left out. Uh, by that, uh, one thing that can, uh, come, comes to mind is an experience that I had when I was in Accra. I was producing uh, an entertainment content for GTV, known as uh, Stars and Movies Update. I was the producer and the director of that. And then uh, my duty was to preview movies that uh, had come out uh, earlier on in the week. And uh, once, once upon a time, I came to the Northern region and had several movies that I kind of uh, put in two episodes of the program. And what I realized was that I, had a, I actually had a call from one of the uh, director of programs at GTV, who was like, hey, uh, now uh, Northern Region more movie industry, sir, I will hold on. See, and uh, uh, to wait, he was asking, uh, so in, you have a movie industry like, because one, uh, he was a director of programs for uh, national things such as uh, GTV. To, to be able to kind of uh, got me a little bit more contact with regards to uh, uh, the national recognition with uh, duty bearers and, and those who are. Uh, one thing that uh, is actually kind of uh, militating against the Northern movie in 
industry is the lack of recognition and the fact that we are not uh, taking up together with uh, those in Accra and Kumasi to help ensure that uh, we sell our money. And you can see most of the scenes are shot in when you talk, you talk of scenes, you can find the originality here in the northern region. So if, we, if most of the movie makers who really want to make an international impact, what they do is kind of uh, get some storylines from the northern sector and they use it to kind of flavor their existing stories. And we, we go to international. So if there is such an opportunity happening, what stops them from actually exploring what is going on in the uh, uh, northern movie industry? So I think our main thing is the fact that the, 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 those who are supposed to help ensure that we have an all-inclusiveness, I don't know whether they are naive or they, they, they kind of just want to sit in their comfort zones. But to tell you, they know, because even Idikoko, when you ask Idikoko, he knows the northern movie industry exists. But when they sit in their board meetings, I don't know whether they, they bring it up or they don't. That is what beats my mind. So we actually need to get involved. They actually need to come and pick some of us and get to, to, to kind of get representation. You can't sit in Accra and say you want to represent some people in the Northern region. It won't work that way. We actually need to kind of get our own people on those boards who remind them that yes, there exists an industry here in Tamale, in the Northern region which needs much look into. So I think that's uh, going forward, that's one of the ways that we can help ensure that the movie industry in the Northern region grows. Amazed, 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 amazed. And do you, do, do you it's, 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 so, uh, it's so shameful when OBL uh, raised the facts of, you know, no, representation of the northern film industry um looking at the whole boards and committees and all of those stuff it's it's so shameful and we have intentionally sort of like ignored all efforts that are being made to you know recognize all of this structured industries in the country I don't, I, I don't know if anybody from the NFA is watching, but um, I know this 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 week I've been on your case. <laughs> this week I've, I've been on your case for long, but yet we are going to talk about the NFA again. So I just want to ask OBL, um, the NFA, you, you raised a point about the NFA. And, you know, you established the fact that you, you, you know, you were excited about the NFA and stuff, and your problem is with the you know, no representation whatsoever on the board. However, the NFA versus the Northern Film Industry, is there a future? And what do you, what do you think are some of the things that the, the NFA has to do, you know, to get the Northern Film one rec recognized, to have that impact in the Northern Film in in Industry? What are some of the suggestions you'd want to give them? Um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I the the NFA, yes, they have a mandate clearly defined in 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 the constitution what they are supposed to do. But if they cast their mind back to the exact words that the president used to Frank, he taxed them that they should develop the industry. Okay, I know their main mandate at that point because they are an authority. They are looking forward to regulate and then control. But what are you regulating when there is nothing there? What are you controlling when there is nothing in the market? You are a policeman supposed to be standing in the middle of a, an interchange. If cars are not flowing, what are you controlling? The president requested that you should develop the industry. That means he has, rec he has recognized the fact that the industry is not developed, it's dead. So yes, it might be out of your mandate strictly in terms of what is written, but this is the charge given to you. So it requires 
a complete research to understand first the nature of the film industry, what are the main challenges that are facing the film industry, what were we doing that, that killed it, what went wrong? Let this data be public. I was happy when they were collecting the data. I, I, I said, probably we might have to find time to talk about it. I was happy when they were collecting the data. We, we understand when you collect data, we understand you need to make use of it. One of the key things about our film industry, unfortunately, it's pathetic that all the major write-ups of the Ghanaian film industry are not written by Ghanaians. Foreigners come in, do research, and write something about our film industry. What are we doing? So you were collecting data. What have you used the data for? You were collecting the data in January. Suddenly, you kept a post that you have stopped collecting the data for some technical challenges. Till now, you're not even taking the data. I recently saw that they had launched a website. I went there, I saw a report, I clicked there, nothing came. And all what they have on the website, I looked there, it was surprisingly nothing. There was a place where they said distribution, distributors, producers, and I went and clicked there and they're just talking about how distribution is done. They don't even have a list there. If you don't have all these data, why do you launch the website? People are going to click and then they want to see something. So if you're not ready, don't put it there. Okay. So, so, so my, my issue here is that, look, the president understood the nature of the film industry. He probably was probably, he, he, I mean, he was probably well informed by data and he charged the NFA to do something about it. And now, okay, now you've set up a committee to regulate, um, um, and then make sure what is supposed to be appropriate is played and then in terms of percentage wise. But where is it? What are we gonna play? Who is producing? Who is, where is it? What, is, what are you going to regulate that you are so eager doing that? I understand that, yes, we have to do that, but that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be our priority. Look, when it was established, what I was first looking out for within their first two, three months was a strategic plan understand they have a strategic plan. I went and clicked the website, I couldn't find it. If you don't tell us what you intend to do with timelines, how do we evaluate you? How do we even know that this is what you really Obia. want to do? Obia, this, this plan matter, I'm, oh. I'm really tired. <laughs> I'm really tired. Go no, we, 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 are no, we, are, we are not going to get tired of talking about this. Um, we, we are going to keep talking about it. And for me, as I said, I'm really seeking for an opportunity to really have a clear discussion, but I am just not in the shoes of condemning. I'm in the shoes of identifying what I personally think is wrong, but then I also have clear cut suggestions. Yes, look at very honorable members kept on the board, despite the fact that it's even bias, only members from the down south, just by this bias. But let's assume that it is based on qualifications that they kept them. So let's assume that there was no one in the North who was qualified to be on it. Okay, well, you are all qualified. How many months now? If you don't tell us where you are going, how do we know you've reached there? If you don't give us timelines, how do we know that you've gotten there? What is your plan? What is your plan? And all what we see is integration and whatever. You're not acting, you're not working. That's not what we want. The industry needs to be developed. You need to understand where we came from, where we are, and then put in appropriate strategies. And please think of decentralization. I mean, um, Ghana is not Accra. Hmm, thank you. So much. Uh, our first, this conversation is uh, producers and senior members. So um, so what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm gladly monitoring. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so can you hear me? Yes, uh, yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes, no, uh, so what will um, be our... the NFA and then the Northern Film Industry, what is the future for, uh, what's the future between the two? Yes, the future is bright because uh, one thing that I've observed uh, across the uh, Southern and Accra movie industry now, just like in the Western movie uh, uh, industry, it's like a rehash of old scripts that is coming up. But here in the Northern region, we have original scripts that have been produced. 
So basically, those who are here producing the movies look at our various uh, settings and the way we, we relate to each other in our, in our homes and in our communities. And then they use it to come up with very, very convincing movies, which the local folks love. Yes, so to move forward, we, we have a bright future. Yes, uh, what we can do first is to observe or kind of identify the mistakes that have gone through so that we can do what we can bypass those mistakes. But I tell you that the future is bright because when yeah, you look at the so industry watch. here, yes. So watch. Yeah, so yes. Um yeah, so great. Um I'm I'm talking in I'm talking in terms of the NFA, the National Film Authority. Yes. In relation to the 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 northern film industry. What has yes. been done okay, so with, far and what's the way forward? With regards to uh, that particular entity, what they need to do is to open up. They are too close. It's a closed circuit uh, organization which doesn't take into consideration uh, the filmmakers or the players in the northern movie industry. They must open up. And it, it, they know they know about the industry in here in the northern region. I just don't know why. From maybe during their meetings is when they forget. But also, it's, the reason is that because they don't have a physical representation there, that's why they usually forget. So I'll just take it. I'll just give them the benefit of doubt and say probably maybe they usually forget. But it's because they have no uh, northern representation or anybody to represent the northern uh, movie making industry. So they should open up. I think if they do. Or maybe if they come here and get to sit down with the players or maybe the leaders of, of the northern movie industry. Here we have a vibrant northern film president who ensures that the industry keeps on going on. He oils it with the various groups that we have who each and every week you can actually see about seven to eight movies coming up. So what they need to do is to come down. The children sit in Accra or probably maybe travel to Kumasi and probably maybe think that that's the end of it. They should come up here to the northern region and get to take, talk to those who are who matter with regards to what ensuring that the movie, uh, the northern movie industry is part of the wider stakeholder engagement so that going forward we can be able to expand and then we can also be able to do what take a bite of the national cherry. All right, all right, thank you. Uh, um, Obi and uh, guys, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm a straightforward guy. I can't hide my sadness for this industry. This whole week, I'm, I've been quite disturbed, but today actually counts it all. Looking at all the effort, you know, being made by independent filmmakers, people who, you know, self-trained, have been able to even come together and form the structured industry and the acclaimed so-called um, film uh, how do you call them? academicians are all here in Accra still confused as to even how to really properly structure the industry and as such when Obi talks about um, you know a laid out plan that we can, you know, evaluate and look at and say, okay, this is the this is what the NFA seeks to achieve, and this is how we can support them. What is their intention for the northern film? What is their intention for the southern film? What is their intention for the western film? What is their intention for 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 whatever they need to do? No plan has been laid to us. The NFA has not even written a an official press release to filmmakers since they got inaugurated. Not an official press release. To even say, this is us, we are here, and this is what we are supposed to do. Not one single official press release. And they are setting up various committees for God knows what. The ally is there. I don't want to bring, you see, I want us to have a very good conversation about, about uh, the Northern film industry. So I'm just gonna leave it here and concentrate on, on, on the independent film industries, you know, growing ourselves. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm really tired. I'm really, I'm really, really honestly tired of this whole, whole 
bunch of academicians who lacks direction so much. It's so annoying. So annoying. I would I will leave it there. I will leave it yes, there. Yes, I, I want to I want to chip in a, a few notes that I've I've, I've taken note of. You realize even apart from the uh, the movie industry, another thing that uh, we we are actually considering that I am spearheading, which is the Tamale from uh, and, and television academy is content for TV. Uh, most of the uh, movies that we make here is mainly the, the output is for DVDs, but we haven't actually had a series which has been running on TV. So last year, what I did with the students of Tamil Film and Television Academy was to actually let them get themselves engaged into how to produce a series, uh, that's TV series. So what we did was to come up with uh, a concept known as the washing bay. So uh, the washing bay had its premiere. That's like a, a, a year ago on uh, one HD. That was where, where the, the series played. So it ended the first season. So currently we are up. Of, uh, uh, of the business, we should do what? We should diversify our act, not actually concentrate on movie making alone, but at least content for TV. With regards to TV, uh, what's the name? Series. We, we normally don't have the series, especially uh, the homemade series or the local made series. We don't have them running on TV. So what we can also do, the filmmakers here in the Northern region can do is to do a tap into that uh, particular concept and ensure that we, 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 we spread wide because just as I said, when the movies, uh, when that particular series was, was playing, was on air on one HD, you could actually see the, the, the level of enthusiasm that people attached to that particular series. And they were actually surprised. And you see, sometimes I, I don't know whether I should feel happy or sad that some people Or maybe in the northern region, and they, come on, I am a fully bred uh, 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 from, uh, uh, student from Accra, and whilst I was in Accra, people knew. It was like six years ago, because for Abdul Salam and to helping out with a uh, 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 post production with uh, Afro. Hello, sir, watch. Huh, that's internet. So those were the things that we were doing. And people said that, oh, we didn't know such a movie come out, do our research now. What are the various roles that people are playing in ensuring that the movie in the... I mean, across the country, they are, across the continent, they are making it. When you talk about from Francophone countries, I mean, the recent one that we can use is Nigeria. They're actually making it, whether they speak in any, they speak Yoruba or they speak Hausa. This is actually a robust industry. Just back and assume that we should make our movies into English before people can enjoy them. No, it can be done. In Chi, it can be done in Dagban, it can be done when we have appropriate subtitles, people will get to do what to enjoy those movies that we make in the northern. So, as we said, they should set up, they should kind of look up here, try to see those industry players who matter, who can come on board and make sure that when they actually come up with an idea or if they want to implement uh, certain uh, decisions, they do it wholeheartedly or wholesale, not disregarding certain sections of, 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 of the country whilst concentrating on other parts of the country. So th those are the things that we should, hmm. we should actually consider. All right, so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Obi, um, Arafat, can you hear me? Yeah, Chrissy, Chrissy. Hello. Yeah, sorry. Uh, when I blacked out like that. <laughs> yeah, I get. <laughs> I get you completely. Oh God. Okay. So, um. 
for 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 young actors coming up in the northern region, I I, I you know you, you guys are doing some amazing stuff, amazing amazing stuff. You know, for people who are self trained, and you know, there's no national film school there. If not for say what's your school now that is you know trying to educate the people and stuff, you guys are doing amazing. So far, what is the um, what is the way forward for for you know growing the Tamil film industry from the aspect of the young filmmakers and act, uh, the young actors, what do you mm -hmm. think needs to be done going forward to, you know, improve the northern film industry? Okay, so um, from a young uh, actor's point of view, I think we need to develop a sense of connectivity. I mean, uh, uh, there are a lot of people out there who can help us uh, develop our craft better, uh, find new innovative ways of uh, polishing the craft as well as selling it. I mean, I've, I've had uh, a couple of friends down south who have actually helped in uh, growing my audience as well. So I think that going forward, aside the fact that uh, we are calling on to uh, the attention of the entire Ghanaian community to have uh, uh, to 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 put some attention to the northern movie industry because it is well deserving of it, very well deserving of it, and and I can assure that once that attention is drawn. I, I can assure that there's not going to be a little sense of regret, not a little. So I think that if we get that uh, uh, attention as well as uh, uh, that connectivity that would help us explore new innovative ideas of developing and as well selling the craft, I think going forward, we are going to have a brighter and a brighter future down here. I mean, I've 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 had uh, I've had an instance where I where I I, I film a commercial for uh, uh, some producers in Neder in the Netherlands who actually came down here to do a commercial for a project that they were working on with some NGO organizations down here. And with the friends I work with as cast, trust me, there was this. Uh, there were there were a couple of times that these producers felt like wow so you guys have this talent down here and i mean how how is it that you've not been able to go your audience to a very wider level i mean at some point i remember one uh, camera guy called eric after wrapping up his scene he was like wow when are you guys coming to hollywood i mean everybody burst out laughing so I think that yes, if if that connectivity and that attention is drawn towards the north, we sure are going to have a brighter future down here. I mean, it's it's happening though. It's happening. That development is gradually coming. It's just not happening as quick as we would like it to. To. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, OBO. Um. I just I can go on and um, you know take your take what you have to say you know going forward what is necessary to develop the northern film industry and as well I just wanted to just wrap it into uh, some final words for maybe your colleague film practitioners um, the government the various stakeholders in the film industry. You know, your last words and then a way for work for the northern film industry. All right. I, I can summarize our way forward into just two simple points. Two simple points. One, research is required. Hmm. Research is seriously required to get a clear understanding of what is happening in the northern film industry in terms of our production, distribution, in terms of the, the know-how, the knowledge level, we need to understand what went wrong or what is going on, what can we do to understand. 
without research, there's no way. You cannot start doing anything without research. That's the reason why I find it yeah. so difficult to understand what the NFA is actually doing now. So let me stay to the northern industry. We need research. Now, someone will say, well, you keep saying you need research. What are you personally doing? Well, courtesy of Professor Kamala from US, um, she's conducting um, a research in collaboration with me. I'm working as a teaching assistant, sorry, I'm working as a research assistant for her. I'm gathering data for her. We are currently mapping all the distribution centers in the North to get a clear pattern um, of the distribution di distributors in, in Tamale. Um, I'm hoping that we are going to have more discussions. We're going to do more research to understand what can be done in the film industry and then see how we can save the Northern film industry. This is what I expect to be replicated nationwide. There's the need to have a clear research done, at least a baseline research. And then when we move forward, we can make reference to the baseline research to understand what we have achieved or not achieved. And then we can do an evaluation and then correct it. The second thing we need to do is at least, the government should have at least one own local cinema, okay? The government should at least, I know they always talk about things like privatize it, um, people, private people should come and establish cinemas, but they are extorting us. I know there are some few private cinemas in Accra, but guess what? Those who come out with movies, when they go there, they don't get favorable deals because those private, in, those private guys are there to make more profit. They are not there to break even. So their terms and conditions are not favorable for with the local film industry. It's not favoring us. So at least the government should at least, at least one up north, one in the middle, and then one down south. Government owned, fully owned cinema with favorable conditions to support us. This is the two things that I just think is our way forward for now. Research and at least the cinema. Huh. All right. Um, your, so your final words to your colleague filmmakers, um, you know, stakeholders, uh, what would be your final words? So I guess we'll go to say, say a watch and then we'll wrap up. Yes, I, I, call, I call them not to sit back. We should, we should come like what you are doing. We should have platforms to talk about it. There's the need for us to bring ideas uh, on board. There are so many people who have very good ideas we need to come together, have discussions. And then in doing so, we can come up with even um, workshops. I mean, what I know I can share with my other filmmakers who are still coming up. I wish I tried something like that with Sewash in the North. Unfortunately, um, it, it didn't spread wide. A lot of people didn't know about it. The few that got to know about it didn't also turn out, but it is not a discouragement we can still put in more effort. We want to, to bring the knowledge level. So for me, I think we should come together, share knowledge and idea, and then bring almost all those guys who want to, to learn to some certain level because the national whatever, NAFTI, is they are not taking people without certificates, but we have more people in the industry who do not have the certificates. Why don't we come together and establish workshops the little that I know I can share. So for me, I just want to call on my Northern filmmakers and brothers that we should come together and form a society where we can share industry secrets and then help bring everybody up to board. And then the more we come together and talk, we'll have a voice. And then when we have a voice, we can push forward, we can lobby, okay? Politics is about numbers and your power in lobbying. So for me, if we really want to grow the film industry, we need to call onto the government. We need to come together have the strength, numbers, and lobby and bring their attention here. And then research will provide data for investors to come. Nobody would like to come into the industry or Ghana to invest when he doesn't know what is there. And it's only research that can bring it up. I don't know how much I'm emphasizing on the research, but I think that's the way forward now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sir, sir Wash, uh, I think his video has gone off. So I might, I would have to just wrap up um i can say thank you very much enough obi uh arafat sewash you guys have been amazing you've made this show uh one to remember and honestly 
we've not held back. We fought it out. I think maybe today or tomorrow I might I might go live to talk about this this whole NFA holding their plan to themselves and just doing this about anything. I might have to psych people up to you know have 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 a conversation about it. Just all of us meet and talk because I I, I feel like. You know, like they were just stressing on research, research. We need a lot of research, a lot of communication and discussion, deliberations. You know, we need we we need these things to really bring to bear the challenges of the industry and then see how best we can begin to solve them. The individualism is so much, and I don't know how we can solve it, but I believe that gradually the 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 northern farming industry would get the recognition it deserves and the and the resources and investments that it be, it, be, it rightly des deserves 50 million was allocated to the creative industry how much is coming to the film industry we do not know just this evening a letter was received from the minister talking about uh, you know the creative court the creative arts court why all of a sudden, when in the political year, when we are going to elections, all of a sudden you are doing all of these things? No, you see, we are not stupid. Honestly, some of us have passed those, those levels of politics. And until we begin to really, really, really take the film industry serious. Huh. Okay, thank you very much, Obi. I, I don't know if you have any last words, but uh, that is me for today. Um, thank you very much, Arafat. Thank you very much, Sir Wash. I'll be coming. Uh, I think there are more talks to be done about the, the northern film industry, and I'll be coming back uh, for us to talk some some more. I think the, the South has a lot to learn from the North because there is so much structure, there is so much orderliness, there is so much uh, we need to learn from from the North, and we will be coming back to you guys again. Thank you very much, boss. And I'm looking forward to your new, your, your new film. I won't miss that for the world. <laughs> and thank you very much, guys. All right. Thank you very much, everyone who watched on Facebook. Let me read some comments from Facebook before we, we leave. To, um, if you guys have time, let, let me just read a, some quick ones. Um, great. We have some comments from Facebook. Some amazing comments. It's, I think it's all shout out to Obi. The wash, Arafat. Um, I think people are loving all the comments. I want to see if I can read some of the main comments and see if there are some questions that probably you guys might want, want, want to take. Um, okay. Our industry lacks funding. The producers don't like proper and creative directors thinking. The creative director thinking are. Uh, Expensive. Okay, I'm trying to get that. Okay, Carmela is asking, how is distribution structured? Is there a calendar? Is there a censorship? Who decides which film goes on the market and when? Okay, but uh, Obi, is there something like that in the North with a distribution? Is there a structured way of the way you guys do your, your distribution? Um, yes, and then suddenly no. Um, um, yes. <laughs> That's how it is. Yes, and suddenly no, because the um, five bank members came together and they decided that um, every week or month they wanted to control the number of people who release their movies. Um, and then all of a sudden, some few individuals came into play and then said no, they were not going to agree. And it went off again. We we saw it as a light that has just been blown off suddenly. And it was a bit disappointing. So um, I, I think um, we, we, we had, it didn't work, just suddenly went out. But then almost every month we have about four, four to five movies in the market. So yes, but a lot of movies are flowing to the market. This is just, this is no brainer. This is not, this is just a simple common sense. If we yeah. have a calendar, we can schedule ourselves and then everybody can get enough playtime to, you know, stay in the market for a while, 
before the next film comes on board. This is this is so simple. Yes. So um, yesterday I was in class, and then I was telling my students that one of the most scarce commodity of late in this world is common sense. Mm -hmm. I, yes, right. it's becoming it's becoming so scarce now that you really cannot find a true human being that just exhibits common sense without any sort of biasness. It's becoming serious. And I'm still trying to find out the reason why someone will not accept such a structure or an arrangement. I mean, it's, it is the right way to go. Um, this is the standard practice we know even in Hollywood because you need to book a slot and know when to come out so that there's regulation. Okay, there's regulation. Everybody wants to control. It shouldn't be in a chaos. And it shouldn't be in a form of everybody just coming out. So um, I'm also still struggling to, to understand why um, such an arrangement was all of a sudden thrown out of the door when this was what we're all fighting for. All right. OK. Um, it's a lot of talk for one day. Um, thank you, guys. It's been amazing. Thank you, Sarah Wash. Thank you, Arafa. Thank you, Obi. We'll, we'll be back talking about the nothing film. I'm personally going to take this up and see to it that every month, some way, somehow, we get, to, we get to talk about, have a conversation about the northern film industry, the way forward, and what can be done, the policies that might be put in place, and you know, talk as much as we can about it. It needs to be spoken about. Well, thank you very much, and God bless you. Keep being amazing, and thank you to everyone who watched on Facebook. Thank you very much. We can't say thank you enough. Have a good evening, and God bless Ghana. God bless the Ghana film industry.